the death in six that was uh Good morning, and you are very welcome to the Al Amaret Cricket Ground here, just about 10 to 15 miles outside of downtown Muscat in beautiful Oman, and you are joining us in the third over of the opening match of the Asian Cricket Council Western Region Asia Cup T20 qualifiers, and if you've just joined us, Qatar, they won the toss this morning, and they almost lose their first wicket there with the short ball. The bouncer coming in from the big tall Hassan Ibrahim. He's been impressive in his first over. Yeah, Qatar captain Iqbal Hassan, he won the toss this morning, decided to bat first. Straight away, no hesitation. Qatar coming fresh off a three match T20I series over Uganda, back home in Doha in preparation for this qualifier. They won that series 2 1 over the higher ranked Uganda. Side on the rise, Qatar. What an impressive start from the Maldives. I was chatting to their team this morning and they named their opening bowler as the one to watch. That's Hassan Ibrahim. Very impressive so far this morning. So the end of three overs, Qatar 13 without loss. So to continue open this now the fourth over. We've got the big left armor, Ahmed Marouf. And he smashed down the ground. There's a man at long off. 
Taken. It's a really good catch. The first wicket. Great celebrations. Well held by Ibrahim Razin out at long off. And just before we came online, we saw a solitary six in the innings. That was smashed by Cameron Cam. This time it's Zahir, Zahir Uddin Ibrahim who falls. Great joy for them. Into this, remember Qatar much more experienced in their T20 career, but early joy for the Maldives. The first wicket to fall. Zahir Udin falls for just one. His 17th T20I today. He's made the solitary. No joy for him. Looking for the big, powerful hit down the ground. The new man to the crease now, Mohamed Tanvir. He's in at number three. But early joy for the Maldives. Their two openers have bowled really well. Hassan Ibrahim, tall and rangy from the far end, from the Al Emirat end, as we call it here. He's been very impressive, but well backed up by his left arm opening colleague. And he's got the first wicket for the Maldives in this Western Region T20 Cup qualifier. What a start that is. Inside out over extra cover, one bounce four. That's a glorious shot. Cameron Khan, his second boundary. Of course, Cameron Khan, he came on to strike after the batsman had crossed with the ball hit into the air. Just before he came on air, he smashed one right into the side screen. Full delivery, hit down the ground and That really starts to get Qatar going. This is one of two games that it's in progress this morning at the Oman Cricket Academy here in Al Amarat. The other game, Iran taking on the UAE. Change of angle. And that's brilliantly played. Just opens the face, runs it off the bat. The two men allowed outside the circle at the moment means that third man is up in the circles. That's going to run away for a boundary four. Back-to-back -back boundaries for Qatar. Recovering well from the loss. The early loss of Zahir Uddin. But yeah, the other game going across on the second pitch here at the Academy Grounds. Iran, they're batting first in early trouble against the UAE. Five for two at the moment. It's eight teams here this week battling it out. So eight teams here this week battling it out for two places in the main Asian Cricket Council qualifier. And those two sides from this western region will join two sides from the eastern region in a four-team qualifier to see who goes and joins the big, big boys. Of course, the Asia Cup now played in a T20 format in this cycle. So it's alternating cycles. Back in 2018, it was the 50-over format as the Asian sides built up for the Cricket World Cup in 2019, but with the World, uh, the T20 World Cup in 2020, the Asia Cup reverts to the T20 format. So one of these sides could well be going on to join the big boys, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Afghanistan. They're the five automatic sides. That's glorious batting. Too much width offered from around the wicket. The change of angle hasn't worked. Ed Marouf, and that's an expensive over. The most expensive one of the match so far. John Qatar are 25 for one.
So let's take a look at the Qatar batting card. As you can see, it's been very dominated by Kamran Khan so far. Mohamed Tanvir, that is in at three, but plenty of batting to come. You see 14 names there. That's the full squad we have on your screen at the moment. But the three to miss out today for Qatar, Darmang Patel, Saklain Arshad, and Musarway Shah. So 14-man squads here. And disappointment for Amil Marouf after making that breakthrough. But we're going to see the first change in bowling of the day. And we're going to see Liam Shafiq brought into the attack. Liam Shafiq, right arm median from the Al Emirat end. And of course, these are all T20 internationals now. Fantastic decision made by the ICC just last year to grant T20 international status to all of their members. So as long as both sides are ICC members, the games are full T20Is. They go up on their Crick Info profiles. Let's hit into the offside. Well fielded by the big man. That's Mohamed Rishwan. Good piece of work, but they'll get through for the single. So... Mohamed Tanvir gets off the mark. Wisely bringing Cameron Cam back on to strike. Beautiful facilities here in Oman. This is one of two grounds at the Oman Cricket Academy set up. So eight teams here this week will have two games every day. Every single ball of you will bring to you live on the Asian Cricket Council. YouTube channel, a play and a miss and a big appeal. Seen some enthusiasm, early enthusiasm from the Maldives in the field. Yeah, brilliant story, Maldives cricket. Six of their 14-man squad coming from Mali, the capital. Five from out in the islands. Three of the players naturalized Sri Lankans, but 11 of these, this squad, Big swing and a miss outside the off stump. You can see Cameron Khan looking to try and take advantage of this early power play stages. The first six overs of any T20, I remember just two fielders allowed outside the 30-yard circle. And at the moment, those two fielders down at third man and long off. So we haven't seen much on the leg side. Cameron Khan looks to hit inside out through the offside really powerfully. He's had a good start to his... T20i career, 350s already. Today is 18th T20i. The 31 year old right hand stroke maker. Slower ball. And even though it's straight to the man, one of the three naturalized Sri Lankans in the team, that's. The Lantha Kure there, it allows the single. It's a good tight start this from the Maldives. They'll be happier, arguably be the happier of the two sides so far this morning. Remember Qatar won the toss this morning, decided immediately to bat first. Down the track and hammered into the offside. That's a glorious shot. Nearly soars all the way for six. In fact, it does. Clears the rope. Superb use of the feet coming down the track from Mohamed Tanvir. Gets to the pitch of the ball. It's no more than military medium. And hammers it through the offside. So Qatar favoring the offside to start this morning. And at the end of five overs, the score moves to 33 for one.
So we're going to see a double change in bowling. And we're going to see spin for the first time today. Spin in the shape of Adam Umar. Definitely one of the best hairstyles on show, no doubt about that. We'll see this week. We're going to see his leg breaks into the attack. In fact, we'll see his off breaks into the attack. Immediately takes the aerial route down the track. Cameron can. So a little bit of a gamble here. Final over of the power play and decide to go to spin. Adam Umar is going to dart his off breaks in flat and quick. Not allow any elevation to work with. The guitar batsman. And the first time we see the leg side utilized, Mohamed Adim has started really, really well. And he uses that extra pace on the delivery from Adam Umar, and it's worked into the leg side. It's going to be another boundary four. He's off to a flyer. Nicely flighted this time by Adam Umar. Good comeback from him. Swept powerfully into the leg side. There's protection out there. He's going to have work to do. And he gets the full dive in, but he's not going to cut it off. So Mohamed Nadeem's flying start continues. Qatar starting to press the accelerator button now. And really taking advantage of this final over the power play. I said it was a gamble, bringing the spin into the attack with the fielding restrictions still in place. And that's a glorious shot all the way along the carpet. Picks out the gap. The two men in the deep now moving. So he was stationed at really an old-fashioned cow corner. He's coming more towards... a. Deep mid-wicket now, long on the other fielder outside the circle. But early pressure on Adam Umar here. Looks to go across the line again, through to the keeper this time. That's Mohamed Azam, the captain, the 33-year-old captain of the Maldives. Qatar is certainly the more experienced of... Maldives just 11. Maldives are one of the sides at the South Asian Games in December up in Kathmandu. A few struggles up there, losing heavily to host Nepal by 80. So six overs gone here. You're watching Qatar against the Maldives in the glorious surroundings of Muscat. Andrew Leonard here bringing you these pictures for the Asian Cricket Council with Crick Clubs Live. And we're going to be bringing you every single ball of this tournament, the men's Western Region T20 tournament. Remember, two sides from the eight here this week will qualify on to the next stages. 
And that one signalled wide outside the off stump. He really threw the kitchen sink at it, Cameron Can. But Liam Shafiq into his second over. Just strains slightly outside the off stump and two for our two standing umpires today. We've got Anantha Kumar. It's him standing at the square leg currently and Rahat Chowdhury who signalled wide. Really good use of the feet again. Not much to pace not much pace to work with for the Qatar batsman, with the exception of perhaps the tall, rangy, quick Hassan Ibrahim who opened up the bowling. So clever cricket so far from the Maldives, just keeping things tight. Run rate exactly seven and over at the moment. They can restrict Qatar to something around 140, 150. Good batting surfaces here, remember. A yeah, really good piece of field, a backward point. Cuts off the chance of a second. That's Hassan Rashid. But remarkably, you've got to remember the Maldives are playing against all odds here because they don't have any turf wickets. Back home, they play all of their cricket on artificial wickets, so immediately coming into what is something of alien conditions, having to play on grass. Slower ball just down the leg side, and the umpire decides that that's either clipped the pad or perhaps... Because Cameron Khan has come across his stumps, he's decided to not signal that wide. Yeah, just I think it might have clipped the pad on the way through. So good decision that one from Rahat Chowdhury. Third umpire today is Eunice. All these officials, of course, Asian Cricket Council. Standing officials and umpires. And the misfield's going to allow a single. So Cameron Khan continues to try and get the strike back to Mohamed Tanvir, who's really come in and pressed the accelerator right from the off. And yeah, delighted to be back here in beautiful Muscat. It's a glorious scene here at the Al Emirate Cricket Facilities. That one just opens the face, and the Maldives just perhaps guilty of leaving their men in the circle right on the edge of the circle. So singles coming easily, but Reasonably tied over. It's the five runs coming from it. At the end of seven overs, it's 47 for one. So 9.30 a.m. local time was the start of the first game this morning, and what we'll see later on is certainly warmer conditions so very pleasant right now probably 22 23 degrees local we're in the shade here so it's absolutely glorious right now but later on this afternoon the temperature will start to ramp up there's talk of over 30 degrees at points this week so every game every day will have two games played on each ground, so four games every day. It's a tough schedule. Back to back to back, T20Is. In the group stages, two groups of four, remember? Two go through to the semi-finals. That's a lovely sweep shot. Gets it behind square, so work to do for the left armor. He's got to run around it. Ahmed Marouf, who does well, saves the boundary and cuts off two runs. But you can see immediately Mohamed Tanvir is so keen on the sweep shot. Doesn't mind coming across the line of the ball. But with the power play now over, added protection for Adam in the deep. Three men on the leg side. Very open space this time, just gets through for the single. Yeah, Katara would be one of the fancied sides this week. You know, perhaps try to upset the apple card of the old guard of Oman and the UAE. He'll be the two favourites to take the two qualification spots. Floated hammer down the ground, straight towards long off. Gets one hand to it, but puts it down. A brilliant effort at long off. That's Ibrahim Rizan. He did get a full hand to it, but it was hit powerfully. And one bounce over the rope for four. That would have been the catch of the week already. 
Super effort from Rizan. But he's put it down. And I'm just taking a look at the replay on my screen here. It was hammered down the ground. It was a brilliant effort from Rizan. He got one hand to it. He just couldn't cling on. Speared into the pads, half an appeal, clearly going down the leg side. An easy one for umpire Ananta Kumar, who correctly signals leg bite. But yeah, you're watching us today from Group A. So the other two sides in Group A we'll see later on this afternoon. I'll bring you coverage of that. That'll be Oman against Bahrain. So Oman and Qatar would be the favourites to take the two spots in the semi finals. Oh, that's glorious batting. Super use of the additional pace on the ball. This is a gem of an innings from Mohamed Tanvir. Accelerating rapidly into the 20s. Opens the face, steers it past the fielder at third man. Qatar starting to motor now. Yeah, so the way the tournament works is that four sides in the two groups and two teams will advance to the semi-finals. But from the semi-finals, it will be the winner of those semi-finals that takes the qualification spots onto the next stage. So the only real advantage of winning your group is you'll play the side that finishes second in the other group. That one delivered from about 23, 24 yards from Adam mixing it up. So of the eight sides here, you'd have to fancy Oman and UAE as being the two strongest fancies. Eight overs gone now, it's 60 for one. And the reason they're probably the two strongest fancy, they're the two highest ranked in the T20I rankings, the ICC. But Qatar will fancy their chances, perhaps upsetting the apple cart. Perhaps Saudi Arabia, maybe Kuwait. UAE and Oman, Oman in such brilliant form, of course, outstanding in Kathmandu just weeks ago. I was there covering the Cricket World Cup League 2 tri-series between Nepal, USA and Oman, and Oman were simply phenomenal, led by Aki Bilyas and Zishan Maksud, the captain. They really were dominant. We see the first of three naturalized Sri Lankans in the side here. So it's going to be a change in bowling from the Muscat end. As we see Corey into the attack. And he was given to me as one of the two men to watch this week. He's a leg spinner. Bowls fast, darting leg spin, a little bit like Probably someone like Jeevan Mendes from Sri Lanka. Can't land the first one, but no harm done. Hit down the ground for a single. Powered towards long on, and it's going to soar over his head. What a shot that is. Wasn't a bad delivery by any stretch of the imagination, but Cameron Cairns hit his second six. Smashed it all the way over long on's head. That's the way the modern game goes. You take on the fielders on the boundary. You back yourself to hit it over them. Qatar really coming into the ascendancy now. Yeah, good piece of work. Behind square on the leg side. That's Liam Shafiq who makes the diving stop. But you can see he's not going to be floating any of these leg breaks up. Melantha Corey darting his leg breaks in. That's much better. Love to see the sweat band across the head. Number 99 on the back, Melantha Corey. Googly this time. 
Clearly out of the back of the hand, but well picked by Mohamed Tanvir. And oh dear. An absolute shocker for Liam Shafiq. He's tried to get down and cut off the second. And he's ended up falling in a heap. And he gives away the boundary. And that is a very unhappy bowler on your screen. Delantha Corey cannot believe that he's given away the boundary four there. Short pull this time, and it's going to be back to back boundaries. That's a poor delivery. Melantha Corey's dragged that one down. He went back to the leg break, looking to spear it in. But a poor start, really, for the leg spinner. And with nine overs gone, it's 76 for one. So we're going to have a change in bowling with Adam Umar coming out of the attack. And we're just going to wait on the signal because that one was very close to a no ball. The two umpires look at each other, decide to give the bowler the benefit of the doubt. Ibrahim Razin into the attack with his off breaks and not starting with a good delivery. That's a little better. As I said before, the problem for the Maldives at the moment is even the good deliveries are going for singles. And this partnership between Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tavir is really growing. That's better from Ibrahim Razin. Spin will play a big part this week. Pitches in the Middle East tending to turn. Another full toss. And we're going to wait for the signal. I think that one should surely be very close to a no ball. You can see the batsman, Cameron Khan, just looking at the umpire and saying, is that one not over waist tight? Remember, if a ball... Delivered over the standing position of the batsman's waist. It signaled as a no ball, and the next delivery will be a free hit. Oh dear, poor fielding. Absolutely no need to throw that one there, and they'll give away an overthrow. Not what you want. Slower this time through the air. Brave bowling. Hit out to the sweeper. That'll just be a single. Approaching the halfway stage. It was certainly all Maldives through the power play, but Qatar, they're right on top now. It's 82 for one after 10. Could be half a chance of a run out, direct it, would have been out. Ibrahim Razin picked up cleanly, fired at the stumps. Kurum Khan was quick to come through, but I think he would have been caught short. Hits his cap off his leg in frustration. Need the second breakthrough here, the Maldives.
Googly hit into the air. That could be half a chance at long on. It's going to soar over his head, though. Cameron Khan has shown great power throughout this knock. He could be looking towards yet another T20 I half century. He's already got three in his fledgling career, the 31-year-old. His 18th T20i today, his highest score is 68. But he's within a boundary. He went for the googly. It was well picked and dispatched over long on. Good comeback, but good batting as well. Like I said, again, the problem is even with the good deliveries, they're being worked away for the single. Advantage Qatar right now in this tournament opener. That's a glorious shot hit through the offside. Lots of time to get back for two. Been a really impressive partnership this. That's a glorious shot, straight as a die down the ground. It's going to be one bounce. In fact, it's not. It's going to be one bounce into the side screen. But it soars all the way for six. How impressive has this partnership been? Sensational batting from Mohamed Tanvir and Cameron Khan. Slightly overpitched by Corey, but he's been punished. The leg spinner's been hammered at the moment. Goes for the googly, good comeback, but again, brilliant batting. Just dead batting it down for a single. Both batsmen within eyes, inches now of the personal milestone of the half century. And they're just one away from 100. So with 11 overs gone, it's 99 for one. Just worked into the leg side, so he's going to move to within a run of his 50. Give you a quick score update from the other ground. Iran batting first over there against the UAE. 33 for four. And the 12th over really struggling. Powered down towards long off. Fumble from the fielder. So both batsmen right on the cusp of half centuries now. Brings the 100 up. And that's going to be 50. <laughs> Great delight from Hamid Tanvir. A super knock. Coming from 27 deliveries. Outstanding stuff from him. And great delight. Lovely celebration. And he's going to run down to his partner. And get this congratulations as well. What a superb innings that's been. Came to the wicket at 30 for one. And he's gone absolutely ballistic. 50 off 27 deliveries. Five fours and two sixes, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. Oh, brilliant fielding. That's superb at cover. That's the first really good piece of fielding for the Maldives. Dives full length to his left. Sticks out the one hand. Gets the hand down at it. Super from the fast bowler, Hassan Ibrahim. Powered into the leg side. That's going to soar all the way and go for six. And that's going to be 50 as well. He signals to his teammates, raises the bat. Great delight for him. A fourth T20 half century for Cameron Khan. I can't decide which of those two knocks has been the better. This one coming from 38 deliveries, four fours and four sixes. 
It was just short of a length from Ibrahim Razin and punished harshly. Beats him outside the off stump. Really good batting this from Qatar. At the end of 12 overs, they're 108 for one. So there's the match summary on your screen at the moment. Qatar 108 for one, going exactly at nine and over, but what a partnership this has been. Just five runs short of the century partnership. Mohamed Tanvir and Kamran Khan have been simply outstanding. It's been some loose bowling. It's been heavily punished, but the batting's been first class. We're gonna see the leg spinner. Curry whipped out of the attack. We'll go back to the off breaks of Paul. And that one's going to be absolutely smashed. Into the side screen, the biggest six of the day. The white ball making a mark in that black side screen as it soars into the sky. And these two batsmen might just be thinking, could we be on for 100? Plenty of time, eight overs left to bat. Mohamed Tanvir moves to 50. Six off just 28 deliveries. He's going to two a ball. That's been really impressive for me is the way that they've batted as we get another boundary. The Maldives now at sixes and sevens. The head's going down a touch. Great fireworks from Qatar here. A really good start to the tournament. Yeah, just talking about the two sides likely to take the two qualification places. You'd have to think Qatar are going to be in the mix. And we're going to have 6-4-4 four, four to start this over. The change in bowling from Paul hasn't worked. Glorious batting from Mohamed Tanvir. What a knock this is. Number three, aimed to decrease at 13 for one. And 100 partnerships come up in less than eight overs. Well, that's poor bowling, but it's hit straight to the man at cow corner. And Mohamed Tanvir can't believe it. He's given it away. 100 was there for the taking, you'd have to say. It was a short ball, not a good delivery. And he has pulled it straight to the man at cow corner. So Tanvir's dreams of a T20 international century end. He's gone for 64 off 31 deliveries, a superb innings. An innings of the highest quality, and he won't quite believe how he's got out. Probably one of the worst deliveries of the day. Dragged down. And he's gone. A huge ovation he gets, though, from his teammates. And what a partnership that was. So we're going to see, coming in now at number four, for Qatar is going to be one of their players of Sri Lankan origin. This is Imal Malindu. Of course, like all good Sri Lankans, he's got four names confusing me here. Imal Malindu Gale Lianga, but known as Imal Malindu. Qatar, of course, Coached by the former Pakistan cricketer Shahid Mabul, managed by Gul Khan. So going to be the left-hander on strike for the first time. So far today, and hopefully for the Maldives, it can just stem the flow because their run rate was really starting to spiral out of control from their perspective. 
And Melindu's underway. Hit nicely into the offside. So he'll keep the strike. The end of 13 overs. Qatar 123 for one. So we're going to have a change in bowling. Going to go to the second of the three Sri Lankan origin players in the Maldives side. Brought into the attack for the first time today. Gadara Tharanka. Right arm batsman. And what was described to me this morning as occasional off spin, but the Maldives in a position where they need to utilize this occasional off spin. So they're going to bowl flat darts. Try and restrict the run rate. 69 on his back, Gadara Tharanka. Of course, two wickets down, not one, as I said, moments ago. Really good start. Could be a chance of a run out. He's thrown to the wrong end, really, there. Poor piece of fielding. You tend to want to get your best fielder a backward point, and I'm not sure that's the case there with Liam Shafiq. Not a good bit of work. Definitely a run out opportunity if he threw to the bowler's end. So that wicket has just stemmed the momentum a touch. Qatar will still be looking up towards that 180, maybe 190 mark. Going over nine and over at the moment. Big appeal and given. The occasional off breaks have done the job. The left-hander, Chandana, never really looked comfortable at the crease. And as soon as that one struck, you could see that the umpire had absolutely no hesitation. And Antha Kumar, he got the finger up. That's going to be the third wicket. It's often said one wicket brings another. That's exactly what it's done for Qatar. They fall 225 for three. What a great change of bowling. So it's going to be the keeper batsman to the crease now. Mohammed Rizlan. Interestingly, we're going to see the off spinner stay around the wicket, even though the right hander is coming into the crease. So, really good change in bowling this from the Maldives captain, Mohamed Azam. with a tight line, not offered any width. He really is bowling flat off breaks, darting them in as quick as he possibly can. And even that back of a length, no damage done, just a single. I wonder will Cameron can now think he's got a bat through the innings. Really good first over. For the Maldives from 
Kumara. At the end of 14, it's 127 for three. So six overs remain for Katara. Can they get up towards that 19200 mark? Going exactly in and around nine and over at the moment. Going to see Paul continue with his off breaks. His final over now into his fourth and final over. Let's take a look at the bowling options. The Maldives have seven bowlers used so far. Adam Umar expensive. He's gone for 37. But what a great change of bowling to the off breaks. One for four for the seventh bowler used. But for me, the standout bowler by a distance, even though he hasn't taken a wicket yet, Hassan Ibrahim. Almost half a chance of a run out. A good running gets Cameron Khan back to the non strikers end for two. Mohamed Rizlan gets away with a double. Yeah, so eight teams here this week for the Asian Cricket Council Western Region. T20, and we're going to be bringing every single ball of it to you live on the Asian Cricket Council YouTube channel with the Cricket Clubs live here. Andrew Leonard here at Ground One, and you can listen to the dulcet tones of Barney Reid across it. Pitch two where Iran are currently taking a bit of a hammering from the UAE. And you can see the Maldives bench really starting to get into this. They feel like they're coming back into the game. It's been a seesaw in innings. It was all Maldives for the first three or four overs. Before that partnership between Khan and Tanvir really got things going. And is that one going to be all the way for six? It is. Gets out the long handle, Mohamed Rizlan overpitched from Adam. And another one that soars over long on. These Qatar batsmen are not afraid to take the fielders on the rope on. And certainly hit the long ball. For a moment, I just thought that might have not had the velocity to carry over the rope, but it had. Good comeback from Paul to finish. But it's been expensive stuff from him. He's going to finish his four over spell with one for 46. Not what you want as a off spinner through the middle overs. Every ball, just the one over in the power play as well. So five overs remain. We're three quarters of the way through the first innings. Remember, we have eight teams here, as I was saying, for this Asian Cricket Council men's Western Region qualifier. The Asia Cup, part of the Asia Cup pathway. Two sides from the eight will progress to join two from the Eastern Region. And of course, that Eastern Region tournament happening next week in Thailand has been decimated somewhat by the coronavirus. China pulling out. Understandably so. These part-time off-breaks of Kumara really doing a job here for the Maldives. Just wonder, will he bowl out? I'll certainly bowl this over, maybe one more. You can see he's just darting the ball in, not allowing any elevation for the batsman to get underneath. And using the angle from around the wicket cleverly. Taranka Kumar, super stuff. Slower this time outside the off stump. Left alone, that one will be signaled wide. So the eight teams separated into two groups of four, Group A and Group B. You're watching Group A here at the main first ground. Let's hit into the leg side. Maybe half a chance for Adam Umar in the deep, but it hasn't quite carried. 
Good protective field as well on the leg side for the off spinner. Three men in the deep, deep square leg. Cow corner and long on. The only men in the circle. On the leg side, it's a short fine leg. And it's going to go to that short fine leg fielder. This is really good tight stuff. This is not what Qatar want at this stage of the innings. They maybe feel like they'll have enough runs already. Definitely on par to track up to over 180, but they surely should be looking at 200. Their part time off breaks have done a job and a really good job for the Maldives. Still yet to concede a boundary. Can he get out of this second over? He can. Just going to be a single. Well fielded by Adam out in the deep. So 16 overs gone. Good one for the Maldives. Qatar, 142 for three. So if you're just joining us, you're very welcome along to this Asian Cricket Council Western Region T20 qualifier. We saw it's playing to go on and progress into the Asia Cup. Two sides will progress from the Western Region to join two from the Eastern Region. And the first game of the tournament, well, the joint first game of the tournament, you're watching Maldives against Qatar here. Ah, brilliant batting. Overpitched and punished. Cameron Khan has been outstanding so far today, particularly down the ground and through the offside. He's going to move into the 60s with that boundary. Perhaps not quite at the same strike rate as his devastator in chief earlier, Mohamed Tanvir, but it's been a really good knock from Cameron Khan. He's been touching distance of his T20i best. Hits over the offside, and that is an absolutely extraordinary shot. He's gone inside out over extra cover. He looked like he was beaten, but he's managed to throw his hands through the ball and soar it all the way over long off for six. What a shot that is. A shot of the tournament so far for me. And he does indeed go to that T20i best. Moves past his previous best of 68. What an extraordinary shot. Inside out over extra cover for six. And he's tried to repeat the dose, but surely this one's not going to have enough legs. And I can't quite believe the long off fielder hasn't gone for the catch there. Neither can the bowler. And neither can Hassan Asik down here in front of me at third man. He's got the double teapot out. Surely had enough time to get an attempt at the catch underneath that. Slower ball hit down the ground towards long arm, but he's run in and he's going to soar over his head. Completely misjudged in the deep by Liam Shafiq. And as we've seen from the Qatar batsmen, they have the power and the range to clear the ropes. For the second time this over, they've done exactly that. Superb batting this from Qatar, and all of a sudden over 200's on. Driven down the ground, just be a single. Really expensive over this one. Already 18 runs coming from it. 
Shafiq being punished at the moment. And it's a drop chance. We've seen Cameron Khan loves it through the offside, and that one's burst through the hands of Kumara. That cover, and that is not what the Maldives need. A drop catch they can't afford right now. 17 overs gone. Qatar moved to 162 for three. Three overs remain now for Qatar to try and drive this total up towards 200. They're going to think that they can do it. Part-time off-breaks are going to continue. Is this the R over that they're going to target? They are hammered down the ground. It was into the slot. And that's a glorious shot. Six more. Been some really good batting on show. After struggling initially when he came in, Mohamed Rizlan, the keeper batsman, just starting to get going. No timing at all, but it's going to loop straight over the head of the bowler. And it's going to drop safe. I just wonder, is Cameron Khan maybe thinking now about a T20 ice entry. 28 runs short at the moment. 16 deliveries remain in the innings. But with the way he's been hitting, sixes down the ground. He could just be thinking, I could get all the way to three figures, and he's going to get to three figures if he keeps batting like this. That's absolutely huge. What a strike from Cameron Khan. It was dropped short from Kumara. The second six in the over, Qatar flying now towards the tail end of this first innings. Hit down the ground, this could be a chance in the deep. Adam, it's going to soar over his head. This is extraordinary batting from Cameron Khan. He didn't look like he timed that. But it soared just over the head, a super effort. That long on from Adam Umar, but he couldn't even get a hand on it. And I said it was a gamble, this bowling, the part-time off-breaks for a third over. He'd done such a good job. Kumara, but this over has gone 6-1, six, 6-6. Six, six. Qatar, all of a sudden, they're looking not just at 200, they're looking at 220. Hit into the gap, and that's going to come right towards our commentary position. Might even ramp up the hill towards us, it will. Outstanding batting this. Could we be seeing the first ever T20i century by a Qatar batsman? As he's moved to 88, he's 12 short. Hit into the sky. Is this going to be one chance too many? Taken. The dream of a T20i century for Cameron Khan is going to fall short. What an innings, though. 88 runs. Absolutely outstanding. Just taking one chance too many. And you can see he's really kicking himself. Why didn't he take the single and keep the strike? Would have needed just 11 with 12 balls left. A rush of blood to the head, though. He looked to hit it down the ground. He does love it through that offside, but what a knock. The innings of the tournament so far, 88 coming from 52 deliveries for Cameron Khan. His highest ever international T20 score. Seven sixes. Six fours. Strike rate of 170. 88 from 53 deliveries. What a knock. Looking for one big hit too many, he falls. A good comfortable catch, taking it long off. But 
That innings from Cameron Khan has put Katara right on top. Two overs left. He'll surely be looking to go past the 200 mark now. And it's 18 overs gone, 181 for four. Gonna see another change in bowling here and just wonder if the Maldives missed a trick. Not sure why Hassan Ibrahim hasn't been brought back. Two overs, none for five at the top of the innings. I thought he looked their best bowler, but he's finally been brought back now. He won't be able to bowl his full allocation of four overs. This will be the penultimate over of the innings. His third, he's without doubt the standout bowler for the Maldives. I'm just not too sure why he hasn't bowled four overs. Yeah, good bowling. Back of a length. The man to the crease, Tamur Sajad. He's in at number six for Qatar. He's done the right thing, though. He's got Mohamed Rizlan back on to strike. Rizlan already 26. Into the offside direct hit's going to be close. Can't find the direct hit and they won't run the overthrow with the ball coming off the bat of Mohammed. So Qatar on par for, or on course even for over 200. I have to think that's going to put them into the box seat to start their campaign here with a win. Remember, Qatar ranked 23rd in the world. Only two sides at this tournament ranked above them. A little bit of a mix-up. Just keep it to a single. UAE ranked 15th in the world. Oman 17th. Maldives all the way down in the 70s. So it really would be a big shock if the Maldives can chase this total down. But they've shown glimpses throughout this innings. Perhaps a few tactical naivetes through the middle overs, but... Certainly they started well, and you just have to wonder why this man on screen hasn't bowled his full allocation. Really good, hits the block hole. Top drawer bowling that. He even kicks it onto the stumps after as well. Been the standout bowler for me by a distance. Hassan Ibrahim showing great skills there, hitting the block hole. One ball left in his third over. He's got none for nine. It's like he's playing on a different pitch at the moment. So seven deliveries remain in the innings. Qatar wanting to get over that 200 mark. It's the block hole again. Brilliant bowling. They will get back for two, particularly with the misfield. He hasn't had a good day. Mohamed Rishwan, the big man up there in the field. So no wickets for Hassan Ibrahim, but a bowler to watch for the future. Outstanding stuff from the big tall quick. None for 11 from his three overs. Qatar 191 for four. Great joy in the commentary box as we've just had the first little bit of food delivered for the day. 
You'll notice a perk in my voice for the next little bit. Promise not to eat that sandwich on air, though, Chiku. Make sure to wait till the innings break. So one over remains. Six deliveries for Qatar to get this total up. Over 100. They've gone back to the other opening bowler. Emil Maroof's left arm. Interestingly, going to come over the wicket. He came around the wicket, closing off the angle earlier in his spell to the right-handers. It's been a really good first innings. Really enjoyed that partnership between Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tanvir. That one's going to be signaled too wide. And as if to impose his decision and reaffirm it, Anantha Kumar shouts wide ball. No arguing with this one part. Yeah, we'll take a look at the batting card after this delivery. But that partnership of over 100 between Mohamed Tanvir and Cameron Khan has really put Qatar into the ascendancy in this match, the tournament opener. And tries to hit down the ground, flies off the outside edge, just going to be a single. So let's take a look at the batting card. Of course, there's 14 names on there at the moment. That partnership between Khan and Tanvir Mohammed worth over 188, a career best for Cameron Khan. Perhaps not quite as explosive with the bat as Mohammed Tanvir. A few more dot balls for Khan, but a really brilliant partnership. Khan falling within touching distance of a T20I half century. Dead ball signaled. Good bowling. Rare enough you see a leave in the final over of a T20 match, but I think the batsman just looking to see if he could possibly talk the umpire into that one becoming a wide, but not signalled wide. So this is one of two games going on at the moment here at the wonderful Oman Cricket Academy set up in Al Emirat. Really good bowling. Consecutive dot balls. Yeah, the other game between Iran and the UAE. Iran making 61 for 8 in their 20 overs. But you're watching the fireworks here of Qatar. Against the Maldives. Good bowling this. Really good tight final over. You have to wonder why they didn't go back to their two openers. And Qatar also perhaps giving up the chance to make their highest ever T20i total. Never made more than 206 before in a T20i. That was against Kuwait in July last year. And yeah, that chance to make that T20i total is not going to happen now, barring some no balls or something very funny. And in fact, the only way they'll get to 200 is with a six. So it's been a stirring fight back from the Maldives very late in this innings. The two opening bowlers doing a good job at the death. Wickets of Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tanvir certainly helped. What are the Maldives going to be chasing? Let's find out. But down towards us, Adam, the fielder in the deep, picks up one-handed, gets the throw in. They will run back for two. And with the throw being off balance, there'll be plenty of time for them to get back for two. So Qatar going to end with 196 for four from their 20 overs. Super innings, really enjoyed every second of that. 
Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tanvir outstanding. Absolutely first class batting from the two of them. But some really good stuff from the Maldives as well. Particularly their two seamers. Hassan Ibrahim and Amil Marouf there at the death doing a good job. But surely Qatar the happier of the two sides at the halfway break. Making 196 in their 20 overs. We see the sides walk off. And the Maldives just having a little bit of a conference. There's the two batsmen from Qatar going off. So the Maldives are going to have a mammoth chase. So let's take a look at the batting card to start with. A beautiful backdrop of the hills of Muscat. Of course, Maldives just giving us a chant in the background. 196 for four. That innings built around 88 off 53 deliveries from Cameron Khan and 64 off 31 from Tanvir Mohammed, but a good contribution from the keeper batsman Mohammed Rizlan. 31 outside of that, not a lot to shout about. Sahir Udin and their number four are going to fall for one and two, so not much joy for them. What about the bowling? As I said, the two openers, probably the standouts for me. All of the other bowlers going at up over 10 and over with the exception of Ibrahim Rizan. So some questions to answer really for the Maldives in terms of their bowling options and the way they utilize them. You have to wonder why Hassan Ibrahim was only given three overs and indeed Emil Marouf as well. So what that means at the halfway stage of this, the opening match of the Asian Cricket Council Western Region T20 is that the Maldives We'll need 197. And chase down 197 from their 20 overs. We'll be back with you with every ball of the coverage in about 15 minutes time.
Okay, so apart from the things I've been dumping for the first week here, there's a couple other stuff I need to do as well.
Good morning, and you're very welcome back to the second innings of this first match, the opening match of the Asian Cricket Council men's Western Region qualifier here for the Asia Cup 2020 T20 cricket action all throughout the week. We're going to bring you every ball of this tournament live on the Asian Cricket Council YouTube channel. And if you're just joining us for the first time today, you've missed a really entertaining first 20 overs. Qatar won the toss, decided to bat first, and thanks to some brilliant batting from Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tanvir, they've posted 196. So we're going to see left arm seam to open up for the Maldives, in fact for Qatar. It's going to be Budica from the Al Emirate end. And he's going to be bowling to Adam Umar, who's opening the batting. Alongside the leg spinning all rounder, Nalantha Kore, he was expensive in the first innings. He'd be looking to make up for his performance with the ball. Try and get the Maldives off to a flying start. But it's a tall task ahead of them. Remember, there's about 50 places between these two in the T20I rankings. So Qatar is certainly the big favourites. And it could be a run out to start. It won't be. Direct hit would have been out. It was cleanly picked up. A backward square leg by Mohamed Nadim. And he had probably about two stumps to aim at, but he couldn't find them. So the Maldives innings is underway. A single for Paul to get going. And we can see the intention right from the off of Nalantha Kore. He's going to have a dash at the top of the order. A good pace and beaten through to the keeper. Left arm seamer. Kayan Budaka impressive. Really good pace. That one skews off the inside edge. Going to be runs here for the Maldives. And it's not, in fact, it will go the whole way. Nowhere where he intended it. And on the first boundary four, we'll just get those graphics updated at the bottom of your screen soon. Just bring those pictures back to you in a second, but that one skewed off the inside edge. The extra pace of Budica Mini, it runs all the way for four. This is Guyan Budica Munawira's ninth T20i today. And wickets in those nine T20Is to date. Best of two for 18. Can't pierce the infield. A little bit of shape back into the right-hander. Just having one or two technical issues here. We'll be back live in just a moment. Maldives looking to chase down Qatar's short ball pulled off the edge and it's going to be another boundary again not where it was intended to go from Nalantha Kore but the additional pace there's two boundaries in the over At the end of the first it's nine for none
you know, just having one or two technical issues with the cameras, we'll bring these pictures back as soon as we can. But right now, I'll just give you a score update by voice and I'll describe the action to you as it happens. So to open the bowling from the pavilion end is going to be Mohamed Malik, Awais Malik as he's known in the team. A lot of these guys having three or four names making my job tough enough. And we're back just like that. So you can see big number one on your screen. That's going to be the big fast bowler. Let's have a look at the boys have a bowl there in the warm up. So one over gone. We'll get those graphics updated for you imminently. Nine for none the score. And Malik strikes first ball. He said he's the fastest bowler on show for Qatar here this week. And he's come in and done exactly what a good fast bowler should do. He's hit the top of off. Adam's feet didn't really go anywhere, to be honest with you. And the off stumps castled. Bring you the replay of the wicket here. You can see a good strong action. Always Malik into his gather. And it's dragged off the underside, the inside edge. Come in and carts into the bottom of off stump. It wasn't the top of off stump. So disappointment for Adam. He threw the hands at it. He falls for just one. And we're going to see the big man to the crease. Mohamed Rishwan didn't have a good day in the field. Really struggled in the field, to be honest. But can he do it? So an early wicket for Qatar, putting them further on top here, really. Beat him. A little bit too quick again, the lack of foot movement from the Maldives batsman, very apparent. Got to remember this side from the Maldives, they do not have any turf wickets in their entire cricketing country. But I'm 37, really ramping up the pace. Strong action. 16 for T20i today. 16 wickets he has now. Hit straight to the man at mid on. And it's going to be tough here for the Maldives. Do you stick or twist? Do you try and chase down this huge total? By going all guns blazing right from the off. Or do you try and build? I think we know the intention of Nalantha Kore at the non-striker's end. He's going to be going guns blazing at every ball. Hit into the offside. Straight to the man again. You can see this. Mohamed Rishwan has got the power, looks to have good hand-eye coordination. He's picked out the two fielders so far. Beauty. Looks for the Yorker. Beats him. This is a really good over. This from away is Malik. We just lost our pictures again. We're going to bring those back to you in just a moment. You can see on your screen there the no signal coming through now. But the score at the moment nine for one. The Maldives chasing down Qatar is one hundred and ninety six. Long way to go in the middle of a glorious over from Oez Malik as our pictures come back. We'll get the scorecard updated for you as soon as we can.
driven into the offside, a good dive in stop. And that's going to close out a wicked maiden. What a start from the big fast bowler. The dream start for Qatar. So at the end of two overs, it's nine for one. Yeah, so Qatar probably the one side who'll really fancy themselves at potentially upsetting either Oman or the UAE, who'd be the two dominant sides in this Western region over recent years. But Qatar, particularly with the innovation of T20 status, of course, a burgeoning league there last year, is coming into things and. Could be in for some fireworks here now because Nalanta Corey is going to try and hit every single ball for four or six, it looks like to me. Going to be a little bit of Jeevan Mendes. Does Nalanta Corey. And just as I say, he's going to try and hit every ball for six. He leaves that one through to the keeper. Perhaps recognising the good length that that delivery was bowled on from the big left armour, Kayan Budaka Munawira. So we've got two cricketers of Sri Lankan origin here facing off against each other. Remember, 11 of the Maldives squad of 14 all learning their cricket and Brought up in the Maldives, just three coming in from Sri Lanka. Naturalised Maldives citizens now. But Qatar, what a story. Up to 23rd in the world. Certainly have their sights set on higher. Be looking at the likes of Qatar, maybe upsetting either Oman or the UAE, taking one of the two spots that will advance on to join the two sides from the Eastern Region qualifier. And when those four sides come together, they will play for one spot in the main Asian Cup qualifier. All of these games, of course, being played under the Asian Cricket Council. Runs the Asia Cup. One skews off the outside edge, gonna be a chance for Malik, and it falls just short of him. He's wondering, has he taken the catch? And I think it's just bounced in front of him. Good honesty from Malik. And given as a run, he feels it bounced just into his hand. I'm going to bring you a replay of that. So it's skewed off the outside edge. Nowhere where it was intended. Acrobatic helicopter follow through. And just off our pictures, but it bounced just short of Malik. Almost wedged between his grass, between his fingers and the grass. End result will be a single. Good tight bowling this, and Malik just signaling to the physio on the sideline. Needs a little bit of tape. That's the glorious scene here in Al Emirat. We're about 15 minutes outside of downtown Muscat. And it's a beautiful time of the year here in the Middle East. Late February, the temperatures in the early 20s. It's a glorious scene, the Muscat Hills all around us. It has to be said, world-class facilities here. The Oman Cricket Academy, one of two turf ovals, of course. You can also tune into the UAE versus Iran. It's on pitch two, beautifully bowled. They're going to scamper through for probably what will be signalled as a bye. But really good left-arm bowling. It will be signaled as a bite. That's going to end the third over. It's 11 for 1. 
Of course, these eight sides from the Western region and the Asian Cricket Council mainly coming from the Gulf and the Middle East. So our eight teams here this week, the UAE, Oman, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, Iran, Saudi Arabia, all coming from the Gulf. And then the Maldives, a solitary country, coming from outside the Gulf region. Of course, because it's the Asian Cricket Council, the likes of in Israel, they play in the Europe region with ICC Europe events. Qatar, the burgeoning stars of this Western region. You'd have to think with the kind of cricket they're playing, where they have ascended to in the ICC T20I rankings, up to 23rd in the world now. UAE in 15th and Oman in 17th, but Oman, the form side in associate cricket all the way around the world, they were sensational in Kathmandu. Absolutely brilliant they were. Four wins from four games in Cricket World Cup League 2. Of course, a different format, the 50-over format. But equally adept in the T20 format. We'll see them in the T20 World Cup. Then in Australia later in the year, they took one of the six qualification spots. Alongside Ireland, Scotland, the Netherlands, Papua New Guinea. Short ball. And finally, the big man's got hold of one. Hasn't got all of it, though. Get back for two. But yeah, this innovation from the ICC bringing in T20 international status for all of their sides, whether they be associate or not, means that right now we've got 86 teams on the international rankings, and that's brilliant to see. And we'll have more join them the end of this week because a few of the sides here this week aren't in those rankings of 86 yet having not played enough T20Is to be ranked yet so the likes of Iran will come into the rankings Saudi Arabia as well they're currently ranked 24th so they're probably the big four that will be duking it out for the two spots UAE, Oman Qatar and Saudi Arabia all ranked pretty closely to each other 15th 17th, 23rd, and 24th. It's a big gap down to the likes of the Maldives. Maldives all the way down in 74th. But a great experience for them here this week. Remember the Maldives, as I said, no turf wickets in their countries, in their country at all. So for them to be here playing on grass, That's a glorious shot. Shot of the innings for the Maldives. An old school conventional cover drive for four. Elegant all the way along the ground. Let's bring you the replay of that. Yeah, just capturing the tail end of it there. Glorious along the ground and a non-striker having a change of bat. We look at the next highest ranked side in the rankings here, Kuwait, they're 28th. So they might be in the mix for one of the two qualification spots as well. Iran, as I said, yet to be ranked. Bahrain then down in 52nd. For the Maldives, or the lowest of the eight ranked sides, or seven of the eight have entered the rankings. Iran yet to enter them. So the Maldives in 74th. So from top to bottom in order of the rankings, that is favourites, you'd have to say the UAE, 15th. But for my money, the favourites would be Oman, the form side. They're ranked two spots below UAE at 17th. Then Qatar, who we're watching here in 23rd. Saudi Arabia, 24th in the world. Kuwait, 28th. Bahrain, a big gap in 52nd of the Maldives. 74th, they'll be looking to get a win or two this week and get themselves up those rankings and if they can keep the boundaries coming, they might be in with a chance. Boundary to finish the fourth over. A pull shot, not in full control of it, but second boundary of the over. Brings the score to 22 for one after four.
Yeah, so what you're seeing on screen there is the Oman Cricket Academy building. It's a wonderful setup here. Just to talk you through in the lower level, we've got the Oman Cricket and their board offices. Where Dulip Mendes, the head coach, and all of his staff would set up. And then in behind those offices, you've got the most wonderful indoor facilities. We're looking up to the second story where you've got a pavilion, the tea rooms, a viewing gallery. We should see a nice healthy crowd this afternoon as the home side will be in action. Remember, the eight teams here in this Western region, T20, will play every single day over the next five days. And the two games each day will be at 9.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. We're going to be bringing you every single ball of it. Andrew Leonard here from Ireland bringing you these pictures with the Asian Cricket Council and Crick Clubs, the whole team here. And Barney Reid has come across from Dubai. Barney's commentating on the other game. And the way that Iran-UAE game is going, we might have Barney coming to join us sooner rather than later. Maldives really need to try and get this run rate starting to move. Let me just give you a score update from the other ground if I can. Well, the UAE are just about to close out a win. They only need six more runs. They're going to chase down that Iran total in no time at all, really. Moran made just 61 for eight. From there, 20 overs, and the UAE have made really light work of it. They're going to be chasing this down inside six overs. So we might hear from Barney Reid sooner rather than later, I suspect. He'll be coming over to join me from the second ground. So nicely bowled outside the off stump. Change of pace. You can see this spin attack from Qatar that we've heard so much about as well coming in. In the second innings. So still in the power play here, of course, just two fielders allowed outside the 30 yard circle. Those fielders at the moment, a deep square leg. And third man. Away is Malik down here with me near our commentary position. Driven pleasingly, but no run there. So this required run rate really starting to spiral now for the Maldives. That's a lovely shot hit into the offside, but good diving stop. Gets half a hand and it's going to save at least two runs. He will save two runs. So five overs gone. Exactly five and over. Maldives going at the moment. They're 25 for one. So we're going to see the first change in bowling. Mohamed Nadim is going to come into the attack. He's having a chat to Shahid Mabul, 
or a Pakistan cricketer who is the head coach of Qatar. And, and I asked him for his bowlers to watch. He didn't tell me about Mahmoud Nadeem. I'm going to bowl his left arm orthodox. He told me to watch out for Tamur Sajad, the leg spinner. He's got a very good googly. It's going to be left arm spin to the big man. tall task now. You can see the updated graphics at the bottom of your screen. That required run rate 11 and a half and over. We need to see some fireworks and just give you some breaking news from the second pitch. It's all over. The UAE have beaten Iran and beaten them out of sight. Taking a 10 wicket win in no time at all to get off their campaign to the perfect start. Going to be a big learning curve this week for Iran. Remember, it's their first ever T20I today. I'm going to start with defeat, and what a shot that is. What a shot is the shout from the sidelines as well. I don't know if you heard me say it first and then repeated it, but that is why he's in at number three. Glorious strike from Ahmed Rishran. Inside out, over the man at cover. And it soars all the way for six. We've seen some striking so far today. Really good exhibition. Just dispatched. Yeah, follows it up by clipping into the leg side. He wants two. He wants to get back onto strike, and he'll get there. Always Malik couldn't run around it, so plenty of time to get back for two. Big appeal and given. Mohamed Rishwan can't believe it. He doesn't think he's edged it, but all that matters is the umpire does. And Antha Kumar says there's just the finest of edges through to the keeper. And a really good catch taken by Mohamed Rizlan. He's disappointed. He smashes the turf in frustration. He didn't think he hit that. Just after hitting a glorious six and a two, Ahmed Rishwan falls, caught behind. We'll see if we can, on the replay, work out whether or not he did get a fine tickle on this. It was quicker through the air. He's looked for the cut shot, no real foot movement again. And yeah, for my money, clearly an outside edge. The keeper and the bowler convinced. So that's the second wicket for the Maldives. Fall. And the second strike for Qatar. We're delighted with the fall of the wicket. For the first time, really can just try and keep up because my voice is starting to go a bit quiet, and I'm delighted to be joined by the Qatar manager, Mr. Gul Khan. Gul, you're very welcome to the commentary box. Um, you must be delighted with the start from your team here. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, really, I uh, appreciate for the this uh, tournament uh, we are here, and uh, for you all are the um, live show is going on, and for my boys, which is uh, already all the cricketer in Qatar, they are really enjoying. They are watching the direct. Uh, tournament is all the ball to ball. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're getting all the feedback live from there in Qatar. Uh, tell us a bit about the, the rise of Qatar cricket all the way up to 23rd in the world in T20 ice. Yeah, actually, 
this uh, last two years uh, we achieved too much uh, because of the uh, actually uh, i will say first of all thanks for my uh, chairman mr yusuf jahamal kawari because and his other board member because of his interest now we are really day by day day by day we are going up uh, boys also what their achievement what they are performing and front of them and they are really always supporting us big appeal there but the bowler just wondering did it strike the pad first i think clearly onto the bat at the end of the six overs the end of the power play the maldives 33 for two you had uganda in town for what was really a preparatory series for this a 2-1 win in the t20s were you, were you pleased with how that went ah uh, yeah because of that was our actually we can uh, play for the you with the uganda and uh, for the 50 which is we say friendly matches we give the chance for the our b team new young star they played that 50 also they are uh, they also perform very well so we saw some dynamic batting from the guitar side we're perhaps going to see some dynamic bowling now because this is the man that i was told to keep an eye on this is the head, head spin of tamor sajad to see him operate the second spinner brought into the attack and straight away landing them nicely not too much turn and offer Time put away. Didn't get off to a great start with the back foot end, but that partnership between Cameron Khan and Mohammed Tanvir absolutely first class. He brings top ball in.
Riggs on third late. Just trying to work their way out. Just trying to work their way out. Have a bit of back and ball. Just trying to keep it very unlucky there. Ball to Clark to third late. Ball is being argued. The big hit bag is certainly going on to hit the stump. Trying to hold for the right to do that. <laughs> very political answer. <laughs> Look, I'm looking at this is a very good one as well. It's a cute one from this one there, Tom. The Clark Street manager. I'm just going to let him get back to his duties at the end of this over, but it's been great to hear your thoughts. You said you're here as a tough one. You can't be five games in five minutes and all over the time. Really got two and two balls. Qatar are on the attack here. Two slips in place. Really good captaincy from Iqbal Hussein. He's one of the men in slip. Iqbal Hussein ball yet. Keeps the new man for the Lord Leagues. Happy to have to mark. 11 overs gone. Gorgeous scene here on this shot. It'll be 51 to 4. We're going to play a very fond farewell. Mr. Joe Tom, thank you for coming to join us. We might speak to you again later in the week. Enjoyed having gentlemen that he is in the commentary box. His side are right on top. Qatar are absolutely all over the ball these right now. Surely going to start this tournament with a win and with a big net run rate boost to go with it. So all these need a highly unlikely 146 more from just eight and a half overs left. It's been an impressive performance from Qatar. Why they're on the rise in world cricket. And that one's hammered into the deep. It's going to dissect the two men. Go for one bounce for a four. A slog sweep comes out. And used to good effect. Hassan Asif Rashid. Number five for the Maldives. Seems has never really got going. Perhaps a couple of fortunate world cricket. He's not aiding their players. Huge gap in the rankings between these guys. Qatar ranked 23rd in the world, the Maldives all the way down, and 73rd. Looks up. Five consecutive game days here. No rest for the wicked in the associate stakes. Three group games back to back. Group games we played at 9 30 and 1 pm each day. Really well bowled. Over four overs back to back here. Mohammed Kareem goes away with the Seven year old from Oman that we see this afternoon. Mohamed Kareem, the superstar in the Champions League series in Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Mohamed Kareem will be in action this afternoon. Bringing those pictures from his first round when he came. 
Byron, Jordan Scott, Carter Boots, Michael Arbuta, Graham Jones, too. Barney Reader was in the road this year. He's been two days against Saudi Arabia, but he won't play in the USA. He's 24 and he's played eight in a row. That was when he took the ball. Right now, Barney Reader seeing it looks to be maybe arduous press back in the second round after what was a real drubbing and Opening match over on Smith's pitch two here. UAE, where Barney's resident, got out winners over Iran in the T20 World debut. 12 overs gone. And he's struggling. It's 56 for four. And indeed, Barney's just sat down next to me. What timing that is, Barney. Iran's debut T20I didn't quite go as they'd have hoped. making sure the UAE to my right and certainly hope you can hear me right now we'll just get this second microphone up and you can hear all about that UAE game in a second and we do see finally the captain in the attack Iftar Hussein 31 wickets last year T20 international cricket hopefully Barney we can hear you now yeah very good afternoon Iran in their first game in the T20 World Cup team. Bumps it into the leg side. It's going to pick the man out. That's the fifth wicket. Iqbal Hussein keep doing exactly what he's been doing all throughout 2019, and that's taking T20 international wickets. He's got 31 of them. An average of 16 last season. Tenth to bowl to four death overs. Nine chances for wickets, but his fine record continues. 31-year-old captain of Qatar. I know Barney, you're just joining us on this pitch, but this performance in Qatar has been outstanding. Yeah, look, we said that unfortunately went quietly to start the July first day, but really the runs being plundered over here on one side of the pitch. Absolutely extraordinary amount of passing and ability to play the game in the first few overs. Is there any signs of hope from, from around some, some decent talents in their squad? That's why I'm going to leave all three of the Iran games to you, Barney. He made 14 of them. There. I think you're right, it is very tricky, but you've got Qatar showing here that it's not going to be a cakewalk for the UAE and Oman to take these two spots. Qatar certainly be in the mix, and perhaps either Saudi Arabia or Kuwait could get into that mix as well. Well, even the Saudis have got a chance to get into the mix. Both sides 
They had all these as well. They didn't help themselves with bowling choices. Hassan Ibrahim was outstanding. Three overs, none for 11. He didn't bowl the fourth over. When he was good. He was quick and tall and hit the block hole well. So, with 13 overs down, the Maldives struggles continue 60 for 5. Gotta remember that there's a big gap in the rankings between these sides, nearly 50 places between the two. I just wonder will Qatar be able to replicate exactly what an Afghanistan or an Oman have done over the course of the last decade or so? Really seeing the side on the rise here, Barney. Yeah, well, that's what we should do. We'll chat to the side by the event. That's why we can all hear about the pace of that game. I guess we've got to look at the different times they didn't have to be prepared for each other, I suppose. And I think that's what we should do. You see the leg breaks back into the attack of. Timur Sajad. I think he's going to be one of the stars of the week. He's a really beautiful, classical leg spin of action. And he's not afraid to bowl the googly party. And if he gets that out with regularity, one for 11 into his fourth over, a change of ends for him here. Piece of field into the left of the three for two. So Qatar going through the motions a bit towards the end. All the sixes turn the 14th over. It's 66 for six. Six 
631 today. Happy to our batting total. We've built around what sensational partnership between Cameron Khan and Mohamed Tanbir. But it's the star man with the ball now for Qatar, Iqbal Hussein. Just really bowls it. He did me double. He's a bit like an Ian Harvey or maybe a Mark Elam back in the day. Absolutely. I love it. Sight of a keeper up to the stumps, losing pace, just spinning it about. A significant movement, and he just keeps taking wickets. Iqbal Hussein, 31 of them last year. He's got two for now today. Who'd be betting against him running through this lower order? Beautiful bowling, hoofing in, maybe nipping away a touch off the pitch. Uh, finds a leading edge. All these fall further. The seventh wicket down now. Just back with you now, and we think that a few audio issues have been fixed. Apologies for those, but Andrew Leonard is back with you now with Barney Reid. And I'm delighted to have someone with me. You and I are going to be generally doing the games by ourselves throughout this week. But uh, great to be joined in the commentary box with you. Some dominant guitar performance. And no better story than the Maldives. The Maldives do not have a turf wicket anywhere in their country. And they're playing in what is completely alien conditions to them. They play all of their cricket on artificial wickets. And also what's great to know is that a lot of their players born and bred from the Maldives, earning all their cricket in the Maldives, eleven of their side coming Maldives Cricket Association system. And 11 of that side, complemented by three of Sri Lankan background, who've become naturalised Maldives citizens, but they're just playing a side far better than them today in the shape of Qatar. Up against a formidable side and a horrible mix out, mix up between the wickets. Hassan Ibrahim wanted the single and his partner absolutely didn't, but he sacrificed his wicket. His partner, a shocking mix up between the batsman and the other Ibrahim, Ibrahim Mohammed, in fact, Ibrahim Rizan at the far end. Three Ibrahims in this Maldives squad has decided that he'll give up his wicket and run through. Five overs to go. 
really good pace from away as Malik. And interestingly, that one's not going to be signaled wide. Perhaps with the batsman coming across his stumps. Somehow misses leg stump. I don't know how. It's the narrowest of margins. The Maldives certainly younger in their international career and then Qatar. Qatar are making a statement here. They're saying we're not just here to come and win a game or two. We're here to continue our rise up the rankings. We want to go on to the full regional Asia Cup qualifier where four teams will play it out for one spot. And how competitive is it going to be? Oman, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. Bold them. Away is Malik's. Superstar continues just as we lose the pictures again for you, but it's chopped on. There's back of a length outside the off stump and all that could be done was Prod off the back foot. Don't think he quite fancied the pace, did he, Barney? No, and in a sense, uh, it's a sort of back cut in. Too close to his body. Sort of blocked him edge bit. Going for the stumps. Nine down now for the Maldives. Nine of them for a convincing defeat as well in this opener. Yeah, let's have a look at the batting card. It really is last rights for the Maldives here. And a little bit unfortunate because I think Milan Pecore, who only 25 at the top of the order, was probably a little bit unfortunate to be given out LBW. Probably an inside edge on that one. But it's been an outstanding bowling effort from Qatar all the way through from their quick bowlers and their spinners. Enjoying their bowling figures there. Two wickets apiece for, a piece for four of them. Surprisingly, none for the left arm seam. There's a run out to go alongside that. We've got Silly Mid off and Silly Mid on in. And the number 11, who's done pretty well to survive that one, Barney. 16 overs gone. It's 71 for nine. Yeah, well, probably at first sight of him, but he looks very much a number 11 with, with that stroke. Feet weren't moving anywhere. Just hanging the back outside the off stump. So Barney, four overs left here, and clearly it's going to be a Qatar win to start. So dominant wins for UAE and Qatar, probably two of the sides to watch. And this afternoon we're going to see four other sides in action. We'll bring you every ball of that, remember, on the Asian Cricket Council YouTube channel. I'm going to be here at Alhambra Cricket 1. For Oman, Oman against Bahrain, which will start at 1.30. ring out behind us from the mosque, Barney. And you'll be commentating on Kuwait, Saudi Arabia. That could be a cracker. Yeah, not something that in this whole game of cricket I thought I'd ever be commentating on, but really looking forward to it. It'll be very interesting to see, as it's shown you here, yeah, 24th in the world, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, 28th. So it should be evenly matched on paper. And it'll be interesting to see, because I think in that group, that second spot is very much going to be open. dominant throughout, but I think that second spot is going to be very much theirs, theirs to be won. You'd have to think the winner of that Kuwait-Saudi Arabia game is, is going to be in the box seat to take that second spot. And of course, if they could upset UAE later in the week, they could top the group and go on to play a second. That's a glorious shot down the ground. The first signs of power from this Maldives lower order as it's back for two. And you can see Hassani bringing in not just talented with the ball, so handy with the bat in the lower order. I think perhaps this Group A, though, the, the trickier of the two because Bahrain, Qatar, and Oman potentially all quite evenly matched, just 11 places between those three sides. Big appeal. Again, two noises. Bal Hussein thought he was adding another T20I wicket to his haul, but he won't get it. Such brilliant form in both T20 and ODI cricket. The rise in the World Games has been quite remarkable, Barney. Yeah, absolutely. I've been there down in Darren Charla watching him in the T20 World Cup in India. Such a young lad, he's still there. So many sides are still there. Um, and yeah, just watching them all come back from here has been, it's been a joy to see them. I know you've seen a lot of them as well. And Incredible rise for, for the Gulf Cricket. They're right up there now, especially with the Associated Worlds. And you look at how close they are to the UAE just in the rankings alone. But it seems whenever those two sides have a 
this tournament works is that two sides go through from the groups of four. Really good use of the block hole from Marvin always married again. So two sides will go through from the groups of four, but that won't really matter. All that's going to matter is your semi-final match. If you win your semi-final, you progress to the overall Asia Cup qualifier. If you lose it, you're gone. So even if you win your three group games and you come up against the side that would be second in the other group with a bad day in the semi-finals, next Thursday you'll be gone. So a huge amount to play for this week. Finds a block hole again. Good bowling this. We're going to be in for a thriller come the middle of next week on Wednesday. Nice games at 9.30. Taking place at the same time. of both of those games. Like every single ball of this year's Western Region T20 qualifier. So it's the last rights now for the Maldives. 77 for 9. Number 11 on strike. And it is well to keep it out. Can you tell us a bit about the, the growth of associate cricket generally? Oh, where to start? <laughs> I mean, I think if we go back to the shortening of the World Cup, I think a lot of people still very much aggrieved by that. Feel like that pulled the further development that the ICC is responsible to have 40 20 international status for the likes of these games, which that in itself is, is an encouragement. setup really is first class here and you have to say that that's probably played a huge part in Oman's rise. The access to not just the great coaching of Dean Fenris and you know, his coaching setup, but it's really been 65 days of the year we've had a turf wicket here. We've got Asian players playing turf wicket and indoor in addition to two full ODI venues here in the Emirates and Oman Cricket Academy. Just 15 minutes outside of Jerusalem this one. Beautiful setting as well. You know, no different than UAE, world class facilities in Sharjah, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and so much franchise cricket played there over the last couple of years. But the UAE story is a really good Indian story, of course, at the moment, Barney. A real tragedy that comes left of with several of their players being lost to the game, probably permanently. Got some well publicized scandals. new young side and a new head coach as well.
like to take a little free bump for the race in front of the group. We saw Ryan took fourth and four in the pole. He pulled himself in two turns in there, took it off to his friends there. Uh, he's a little short chap now. Do you feel he'll take the race this way?
ಹೇಳ್ತೀರಿ ನೋಡಿರಿ